If you've done any reading about the Great Lakes and the vessels that sail upon them, you've probably seen this photo of the Sioux Locks. Often folks guess about why there are so many boats at the locks with all of their flags flying and pennants flying. The most common assumption is that it's the 4th of July, but that is incorrect. Let's board our Great Lakes time machine and find out what's really going on. It's actually a major event. Okay, we've landed in Detroit on Monday, the final day of July, 1905. Paying one penny and grabbing a copy of the Detroit Free Press, we can see that it's a 34-page special edition. Inside, we find this half-page banner. Okay, this is just a fairly poor microfilm copy. Let me clean it up a bit for modern consumption. There we go. It's announcing the Day of Days at the Sioux. The 50th anniversary of the opening of the locks at Sault Ste. Marie. They're calling it the Semi-Centennial. It'll feature the most notable pageant of vessels in marine annals. Throngs of people will view the marvel of improvements and the growth of commerce of the Great Lakes. The paper goes on to show photos of the vessels and the barons of industry and lists those who will be attending. We gotta do this. Even as we read this in the paper, more than 200 of the most well-to-do in the city are boarding the passenger steamer Juanita and headed for the Sioux. The docks are crowded with the wealthy and powerful. Not to miss an opportunity, the local pickpockets are well-dressed, blending in and doing a lucrative business. Likewise, the detectives of the Detroit Police Department are doing their best to catch them. Okay, I don't really know who these two are, but it's fun to imagine. Aboard the Juanita are also reporters from the Detroit Free Press and crates of carrier pigeons. The birds will be released along the upbound trip to the Sioux to see if they can be used for ship-to-shore messaging. It is reported that one bird, the one released in Port Huron, actually found its way home. Many of the VIPs are headed to the Sioux by railroad rather than by boat. That includes the Vice President of the United States, Charles Fairbanks, who is to be the guest of honor at the event. Our best way to get to the event is also by rail, but we're going to have to hitch a ride on a very special train. I know, I know. I can't get the theme song from the old TV show, The Wild Wild West, out of my head either. And James West is not on board this train. But don't feel bad. We're going aboard the private train of the Detroit Photographic Company. Their sign says, We photograph the world. And this is how they did it. Leased from the Lackawanna, Detroit, and Western Railroad, this private car is a Victorian-era motorhome. And it's going to take us and the company's photo crew up north to the Sioux. It is staffed by its own crew, including a first-class chef. There is a cook stove, a lavatory, and sleeping quarters. Here's where we'll all be riding. Seated here is photographer William Henry Jackson. Notice the tripod at his feet and the huge glass negative camera on the table near the window. Many of the photos that you see in my videos were shot by Jackson. Attached to a Detroit and Mackinac train, our car rattles its way up north, through Lapeer, Bay City, up to Gaylord, and into Mackinac City. There we wait to be switched and shoved aboard the huge ferry boat, St. Marie. Constructed in 1893, the 302-foot wooden icebreaker was the largest overall wooden steamer on the lakes when she was built. She shuttles us across the Straits of Mackinac and to the town of St. Ignace on Michigan's Upper Peninsula. From there, we go west to Trout Lake to switch tracks. Next stop, the Sioux. 
Most of the visitors came by train and were unloaded at the Union Depot, which is within walking distance of the locks. Here's what it looked like on a normal day in 1905. And here is what it looks like early in the morning of the celebration. Quite a crowd gathering. Located at 566 West Portage Avenue, here's what it looks like today. Just an empty parking lot. To say that the Sioux is decked out for those first three days of August 1905 would be an understatement. It's perfect photographer candy. The administration building is draped in red, white, and blue with a huge portrait of recently re-elected President Teddy Roosevelt. Behind our arrival, an estimated 10,000 other visitors will flood into town during the next 24 hours. And among the crowd are, of course, the pickpockets from downstate. Representative Herkmeyer had his wallet lifted, but chased the lad down and recovered it. The thief got away. Representative Curtis of Petoskey wasn't so lucky. He had someone brush up against him as he boarded the train in Mackinac City. Two hours later, he discovered that his $200 diamond stud was gone. The guest of honor, Vice President Fairbanks, was supposed to arrive Tuesday at about dawn, but missed his train connection. Thereafter, he made it to Mackinac City and boarded the USS Yannick at 11 o'clock Tuesday morning, some four hours late. He arrived at the Sioux at half past nine that night and asked that the ship's captain forego the normal cannon salute upon his arrival. No doubt the local residents appreciated that. Next, in part two of this program, we'll see the festivities of the Day of Days at the Sioux, which kicks off with a boat parade. Tune in and we'll identify every boat and tell you interesting stuff about who was aboard. We left the time machine safely parked and set on idle. <laughs>